I am Judy Shaw on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Joining me today for another segment of NYSE Icebreakers is heavyweight boxing champion Anthony Joshua. Welcome, Anthony. Thank you for having me. Hi. So, right off the bat, the way we're going to we start, start every with a, interview. Start yeah. with an icebreaker. Matt? We've got the cards right here. Grab one, read it out loud, answer the question. Always go for the middle one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. How many hours do you work a day on average? Oh, gosh. That's a good one. I All would right. say, <laughs> so my work is obviously not involved in what's going on behind me mm -hmm. and stuff like this. I'm not normally in my suit. I'm in my track suit. Right. So I would say around six hours a day. Six, six hours, hours a day. day. Which is, it seems average. Yeah. Um, but my job is basically all about output, isn't it? So it's like, a, you've got to balance it. You just can't spend... 14 hours a day just training, training, so just oh, balancing rest and training and recovery. Great. Yeah. All right, well, let's get into it. So I was expecting something a bit more saucy. Not easy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you're making your debut in the U.S. Yes. on June 1st. Yes. You are going to be defending your four major world title belts yes. at Madison Square Garden, and you're going to be up against Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that fight. Well, it's my first time fighting outside of the UK as a professional. I always thought I'd fight here. I don't know whether it would be in New York, Vegas, mm -hmm. uh, Texas. I think that's where the Cowboys. Yeah. So somewhere in America. Uh -huh. But the uh, UK market was big. It was booming. It was great. A lot mm -hmm. of American fighters were traveling over. Yeah, and you were selling out stadiums. Yeah, it's been going well there. So now it's like new territory, a new mm -hmm. year. So I'm looking forward to the new challenge. It's a new culture that I'm willing to embrace, new people. Um, and it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning, so it's, it's something I'm looking forward to, for sure. Mm -hmm. So, does being away from your home turf affect a fight? Yeah, yeah, massive. How, how does it do it? So, we're creatures of habit, creatures of being comfortable. I'm in new territory. Um, I'm not the home fighter, so normally the locals support the home guy. Mm -hmm. So I'm used to kind of having all the support. And believe you me, that energy in an arena for you kind of is a wave that you can ride when people are rooting for you. And some people can't handle that negative energy. Yeah. So it's up yeah. to me to kind of block it out and focus on my job at home. Now, do you think yeah. that's going to be even a little more challenging? Because Big Baby is actually from Brooklyn. Yeah, so from Brooklyn, we're, yeah. you know, we're going to be fighting at the Garden. So yeah, maybe man. it's a little bit more there. I'm on his home turf and his territory. <laughs> but as I said, it's a new challenge. And when you're up against all the odds, you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. And that's the challenge I want. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. So you're fighting at the Mecca of Boxing. Yeah, yeah. St Huge history there. How Huge. does it feel to now be part of that boxing history? We, we were joking about it in the car because we've got like Ali, Frazier, Frazier <laughs> Tyson, Holyfield, yes. Riddick Bowe, Joe Lewis, Marciano. Wow. And then you got <laughs> and Joshua and Jerome Miller. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like you're gonna make history. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully in a hundred years, I go on. Well, in, in the next like ten years, I've got to really stop my name in history books because to be amongst <laughs> those guys, I've got a lot of work to yeah. do. You know? Yeah. A lot of work to do. So tell us, what led you to become a boxer? Uh, my cousin, really. Cousin? I'm, yeah, he's here with me now. He is. Yeah, he's <laughs> right there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay out of the camera, cousin. <laughs> <laughs> he's holding all the belts. Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, so uh, cousin, so what happened is that I moved to where he was growing up, mm -hmm. and uh, he was always into sports like basketball, soccer, all these other sports. And what I liked about boxing, it was one-on-one. -on -one. Uh -huh. So a lot of other sports are obviously team sports. Right. With boxing, I couldn't afford to kind of take time off because mm. it's all based on me. And uh, I like that challenge. It taught me about discipline, lifestyle, health, what I listen to. And that's what I got from boxing and it helped me become a better person. And that's why I do it today because um, it just helps me stay disciplined and keep me on a, on a righteous path in life. Right. Excellent. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about trash talking. Yeah. It's kind of part of boxing. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. it just goes hand in hand with promoting yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? It's good. Look, we're not going to lie. The guys that we look up to and we love have been trash talkers. But what I like about those guys is they've been natural. They haven't mm -hmm. been forced. And they're not too disrespectful, but they get their point across. I'm better than you. I'm confident I'm going to knock you out. And they predict right. around. But for me, I think that um, there's not enough leaders. There's so many followers. So what I stand for is more so just trying to, you know, project myself as elegant, classy, with a bit of respect and mm -hmm. humility. For, for my opponents as well. So yeah, it may be boring, but when I get in that ring, I'm about my business, and that's what matters. Right? It might be boring, but it's not boring in the right. ring. It's not boring <laughs> at all. I'm, I'm about my business. Like, that's all that matters is the win at the end of the day. Now, you have a son. Yeah. Do you want him to follow in your footsteps? Definitely not. Definitely not. Why is that? Like, being, a, being here, right, mm -hmm. amongst everyone, I really want him to understand, like, worldly politics and economics. 
and what's happening in the world. With me, I'm confined to a boxing ring. I could talk about boxing all day, but one of my major struggles is not understanding so much what's going on in the world. So I've had to really fight for my corner in the business arena. So in the ring, I fight for that corner, and in the business world, it's another fight. So I want him to be able to leave the sporting industry alone because there's enough sports stars and go on and kind of ha have his impact in the world to a certain degree. And I want him to make education cool. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, you go to a lot of like uh, schools where I grew up and you ask kids what do they want to be. It's like, I want to be a footballer, a musician. I want him to kind of be like astronaut, accountant, yeah. lawyer, doctor. So there's so many different mm -hmm. avenues you can go down which which I'll support. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're any indication, we saw you talking to the traders, looking yeah, at the screens, yeah, yeah. Like you're absorbing it. Yeah. So it sounds like he's got a great role model who's going to open up all those doors for him. Definitely, definitely. Okay, one final question. Yeah. What do you want to say to Big Baby? <laughs> um, is this censored? Is, am I allowed to? Censor <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> yourself. This yeah. is where you come in and yeah. be respectful. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no sorry, sorry. Don't go like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Big Baby. <laughs> Good luck, you're going to need it for sure. Oh. We're bringing heat in New York, new territory, but this is guerrilla warfare. So put up or shut up. Yeah. Put up or shut up, you heard it here. Thank you so much. Now I know we're in New York and we probably should be rooting for the New York guy, but we interviewed the UK yeah, guy, so exactly. I think you've got two more people in your corner. <laughs>